there on camera. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Carmichael. This is Kerry King, and we're here at the Atlanta History Center uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, and we are also here representing both the History Center and the uh, Library of Congress. Uh, it is April 13th, 2018 at uh, 1037 a.m. in the morning in a beautiful April yeah. 13th morning. Um, we're here to get your statement. I want to thank you for being here today and tell you that um, almost all the interviewers here are also Vietnam veterans. We know you are a Vietnam veteran and we're here today to let you tell your story. So uh, to that end, uh, I'm going to try to get you started here. I sure. want you to kind of tell us where you grew up and um, where you're from and uh, take us started. Take us up to your high school graduation. Sure. If you would. Um, yeah, I did graduate from high school, so okay. uh, I was born in Alexandria, Virginia, when my dad was at Quantico, and um, uh, he was transferred down to Cherry Point, North Carolina. That was where my brother was born, and uh, they were his outfit. He flew helicopters, so he was. Um, uh, he outfit. I'm not. I think it was HMM 161. But I. This is your dad. Flew that was my dad. Yeah. And your he, dad was a Marine career officer. Uh. Well, he started out in the Navy, um, and they made him during the war. He they made him uh, uh, flight instructor, so he didn't get over to. And then when uh, Korea broke out. He went from fixed wing to rotary wing and uh, flew medevac missions and so forth. So um, we went from there to, <clears throat> while Dad was over in Korea, we moved down to Miami and um, waited for him to come back. My, my mom was born in Sweetwater, Texas, so I don't remember exactly how we got from Miami to Sweetwater, but uh, um, when when he came back, um, I remember going with him to uh, uh, Bell Helicopter in Fort Worth to apply for a job, and uh, so from there, from Sweetwater, we moved to um, Fort Worth, and then over to Arlington, which is where I did all my school, grade school, and. Uh, so you were born what year? I was born in 1948. November 11, so just missed the Marine Corps birthday by a day, but you know. So you're a baby boomer. Yeah, I'm a baby boomer. Right. So uh, um, went to kindergarten and you know up through uh, high school, Sam Houston High School. Um, didn't get thrown in jail, but uh, <laughs> I was sure working on it. <clears throat> um, at any rate, no, I wasn't offered uh, you can go to Vietnam or, you know, to jail, but I was I was pretty rebellious at that point in my life, so. So you were 18? I was 18. My dad was, uh, uh, he was down in South America demonstrating a helicopter, and so I went over to Fort Worth and uh, joined the Marine Corps. And he was not terribly happy with that when I when he got back. Oh, but, he wasn't, uh, even though he was a career of marina. Yeah, he uh, he wanted me to be an officer, and you know he could have gotten me, taught me how to fly helicopters, and I just wanted to be a ground pounder. I wasn't. It was that fall from you know however many thousand feet that kind of <laughs> concerned me. So. Um, at any Wide rate, path of a brick. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I joined in. Uh, I went in on the delay plan. So like in uh, February or something of '67, and then we went to boot camp in June. Did you go to Paris Island? No. Uh, everybody on the west side of Mississippi River goes to, you know, you become a Hollywood Marine, or on the east side, you, you go over to Paris Island. So, um, if you were on the, because you were living in Texas, you went to Camp Pendleton, or? No, it, well, it was San Diego. San Diego. Right. 
and but it was the same marine basic with yeah. the same DIs that would also teach at Paris Island. Right. We just didn't have sand fleas. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the same guys yelling at you and you know. So um, you did your entire basic training there mm -hmm. in San Diego. And then we went up to Camp Pendleton and you know did more specialty stuff. Uh, and they put me in mortars. Okay, so, so you had an infantry MOS. Then. Right. Yeah. An MOS and, for those listening who are right. Military, uh, military there occupation. There you basically. go. There you go. And so they made me a mortar guy, and uh, I like to blow up things, and that was a great way to do it. And uh, so you know, we did our staging battalion, and then went overseas, and. He said, by the way, don't miss this airplane, <laughs> you're going to regret it. So we ended up in uh, Camp, Han uh, Camp Hansen in Okinawa and um, stayed there for about 10 days till we got Did our you orders. Go as a unit? No, well, it was everybody in staging battalion, but we had air wing guys, you know, guys that worked on airplanes and so forth and grunts and it was just a mixed. So we might have been in boot camp with some of those guys, but after that, everybody scattered to their various um, jobs. And uh, so I didn't know anybody that I was on that airplane with, except, you know, the guys that uh, had been in our battalion, you know, in training, uh, and which wasn't very many. And um, so when I got to Da Nang, everybody just scattered to wherever they wanted you to go. So I ended up at Fubai with uh, Echo Company, 2nd Battalion, 26 Marines. And if you'd spell Fubai for the... Sure, P-H-U uh, and then B-A-I, so it's two words. Okay, go ahead. Um, when I got there, it was raining, uh, you know, the tail end of November of 67. And the, the company was out uh, running ambushes. And so I had to wait till the company got in. And, you know, I was starting to get used to it raining and raining and raining. And What was the unit you reported into? Well, it was Echo Company, 2nd Battalion, 26 Marines. Um, it was a line company. Um, and so our, our skipper, uh, Captain Breeding, wanted to get us out of Fubai, you know, and, and give his lieutenants an opportunity to call in fire missions and learn how to do things. And we were out guarding bridges and running ambushes and, you know, that kind of thing. So there wasn't a lot of contact. Um, we did run into uh, uh, some Viet Cong uh, setting up an ambush one night and that was my first experience with rounds coming back my direction. And so um, uh, that was before they chromed the chamber of the M16. Uh -huh. So I got a couple of rounds off and then it was holding a grenade all night. And <laughs> yeah. so, so before we went, up, yeah. <laughs> and it, you know, in the morning, there was just that little speck of rust, you know, it was uh -huh. just, uh, I don't know, I'm sure it was my fault, but. Uh, a lot of trouble with the M16 yeah. during the war. Um, so did you later on get a chrome uh, yes, barrel? Yes, right before we went up to Quezon, we had to turn in the old ones and got the new ones. And they had those uh, closed in flash suppressors so you couldn't stick them on the chow and turn the, you know, cut the wire. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was a better weapon than. Uh, um, so your first contact you were talking about was on an ambush patrol, a night ambush patrol. Right. And when would that have been, Jim? About early December, somewhere in there. Of uh, yeah. So we were we were on an ambushes up until um, we got in there C one thirties to fly up to Quezon. So, um, right before we left for Quezon, things started picking up, as you remember, and um, uh, the, the, the big trucks that they were running ammo, they were 
you know, just going back and forth and, you know, so um, fortunately we didn't lose any bridges or so forth, but it was, it was that adjustment from being back in the States to fatigue and learning how to stay awake and that kind of thing. So it was kind of preparation for going up north. Yeah. Um, do you remember when you when you landed in Da Nang and you were coming off the airplane, do you remember your first impressions of Vietnam? I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> when we left Camp Hansen, um, we, you know, they got in a big bus and they took us to the airport. Well, the airplane was that we were going to go on was way down at the end of the runway and it was raining cats and dogs and they said, there's your airplane. So we were all soaked by the time we got on the airplane and, and c one thirty is not really built for comfort and there's no heater in there so it was rather uh, brisk in there. So it was, it was nice to get out someplace that was warm because we were still cold and wet and uh, you know, go that way, there's the chow hall, turn your orders in to, you know, the guy on the right and go get some chow. And so by the time we ate chow, um, got our orders and said goodbye to the last couple of guys I knew and they were going someplace else and uh, catch that C-47 over there and it's going to Fubai and... Um, Flying the C C forty seven to Fubai. There's a lot of trees down there. Um, have you have you, you were around Fubai? I was further, no, I was further south in the first infantry division, uh, Army first infantry division okay. area. I was just north of Saigon, all the way up to Quan Loi, which was on the Cambodian border, uh, about eight miles off the border. So um, we had different kind of terrain. I was in Fubai a couple times. Mm -hmm. Not because I was stationed up there, but because I had I got diverted in the direction right. we were going, and we had to go north to land because of ground attacks during the Tet Offensive and that sure. kind of stuff. So, well, it was just there was just a lot of trees, and yeah. my introduction to jungle. This was not North Texas. Right. This was if if this airplane goes down, <laughs> this is not going to be pleasant, you know. <laughs> so you know, I think. My introduction was when we landed at Fubai, and I'm thinking war. And we got off the airplane, and I'm looking for Echo Company's area, and there's some guys playing baseball. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this <laughs> this, this is like not war. right, you know. Uh -huh. um, and I. Nobody's shooting, nobody's doing anything, and so I was, um, I probably had turned my gear in and, you know, gotten my orders or whatever, and uh, then the guys doing line watch came by, and they're carrying everything but the kitchen sink, and I thought, okay, I probably made the right place, you know, right. so. <laughs> <laughs> Until they transferred you to Kansas. Yeah, right, so, uh, uh, you know, I was learning the Vietnamese, you know, the graveyards and how that works and uh, spirits can't turn right corners and who's making up these rules, I don't know. But, um, you know, we were, half the time we were in a pagoda, we're laying out next to a river or, you know. Yeah. Um, so there were a couple of times where we had contact, but most of the time it was guys just tired of being out in the rain, yeah. you know, and so um, for me it was just, I got to stay awake, yeah. you know, learn how to do that and live with fatigue and eat so sea when rations. when did you get to Quezon? January 16th we left from Fubai. Um, they gave us these pack boards. You know, uh, I don't know where they got them. Uh, some masochist <laughs> came up with it. It's how to load as much gear on a human being without making his knees buckle. Uh -huh. You know, so we call them rucksacks. The Army well, them no, rucksacks. these were. I had never seen anything like this. Yeah. This was um, 
it was, I don't know if I'm going to get this right, but um, it wasn't anything like what you're talking about. Yeah. It was a board uh, that would fit on your back. Um, I think it was like fiberglass. I may have that wrong. It's uh -huh. been a long time, but they just wanted to stick as much stuff on us as, as we, as they could. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm almost carrying my own body weight and, you know, well, you've succeeded. I'm officially a horse, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, we were just carrying everything and everybody's carrying more ammo than normal. Officers are carrying rifles and um, uh, more frags and, you know, the Marine flak jacket is, you know, so more water, more uh, everything. And, you know, being an ammo humper, um, now we're got more rounds to carry than a normal five. So it was, that was, you know, and then they got us in the, in the C-130s and if I get, down, I am never getting back up again, you know, so uh, um, we flew and got up to Quezon and uh, um, boy, I don't remember. Probably something like that, but once they get on, the, you know, get everybody in there, then it's, oh, check the tires or something, you know, right. it's, yeah. so you're in there and it's starting to get hot and guys are going, would you like to see what I had for lunch, you know? Yeah. So, you um, carrying 70 to 80 pounds. Yeah, it was, would. yeah, it was just, I, well, I did sign up for this, but not this specifically, you know, so, um, you know, we landed at Fubai. we all had that feeling. Yeah, that exactly. Um, so we landed at Quezon and Nobody shooting and <laughs> all right, sack outside of the runway and next day we humped over to what ended up as the battalion hill where the um, battalion headquarters was located and uh, um, but that came a little later. We were just out there, um, Hill 558 and uh, uh, that was the introduction to clouds being down on the ground. Uh, when it got dark, it really got dark, and I thought, holy mackerel, they could sneak up a whole regiment here, and I don't know that we'd ever see them, you know? The, I've read a lot about Quezon, and I have a lot of friends over there, mm -hmm. and um, the it was probably one of the worst, most untenable positions in Vietnam. Would you agree with that? Well, I'm very thankful that the summer before you had the Marines taking those hills because yeah. we don't want another DNB and Fu, you right, know. Right. So we had till 9.15, 9.50 or 10.15, and then it was 8.61 and 8.81 south and north and all that. So we took the hills around there. Um, I... <laughs> I think the idea that we understood what the French did wrong, you only have one CO, <laughs> yeah. you don't have two, yeah. and um, uh, we had taken all the high ground so they can't get the cannons up there. Uh -huh. um, I, I don't know that it was untenable, but I was up on one of the hills. I wasn't down at the combat base. So they were taking all the heavy stuff. We were just taking mortar rounds. And I really don't know. Um, so you got there mid-January. I got there mid-January. And how often was the Quezon area taking either incoming mortars or 122 rockets? It, was, it wasn't right away. But once it started, um, it was just... Somebody was going to die on our hill every day, it felt like, and uh, so we just had a time when you didn't get out of your bunker, and um, uh, we got hit on February the 5th when we had a, just one strand of concertina around us. We didn't really have bunkers, much to speak of, 
And so we were unprepared. And the, the helicopters are trying to supply everybody. And we're just up there. And so uh, um, we had everybody firing for us. Camp Carroll and everybody was, uh, uh, you know, the aircraft coming in, Navy and Air Force. We'd taken anybody's, you know, stuff. And, sure. Um, so, what size unit hits your hill? Well, there were, I'm told that 861 Alpha, the hill I was on, was the key to taking, you know, go from one hill to the next to the next. It was the key to taking Quezon. I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> right. But, <clears throat> um, uh, Henry Bag, I may not have that. Major Bag was the guy who really saved a whole bunch of us because he understood he could read the intelligence reports coming in, and he noticed that he thought there was just one battalion coming at us, but there were two. So they sicked the artillery on the first battalion that was coming to get us. So we were going to get hit like this. And he wasn't, he just missed the second battalion that came at us. So, um, these North Vietnamese mm -hmm. regulars? These were North Vietnamese regulars and uh, um, they got inside the wire and uh, that was the night I, I lost some buddies. Yeah. So it was my introduction, wake up, this is, we're playing for all the marbles here. You know, you, you have to have that point to where right. this is real and you, you've got to start thinking about life differently. So um, they just came in with guns ablazing and um, uh, Tommy Eichler, probably saved our hill, uh, Corporal Eichler. We had two or three officers on r and &R. So Tommy just, he just came alive. I remember talking to How Tommy about spell Eichler? E-I-C-H-L-E-R. And what was his rank? He was, he was a corporal. Corporal. But it was like, the Lord had just prepared this guy because when he said when he first joined the company, he was just a big screwball, you know. But he just came of age that night. He was carrying guys. He was uh, bringing ammo up. He was, he was doing everything because the skipper's in there calling in all kinds of That's support. Right. And somebody was, had to be out there doing that stuff. I'm in mortars, so you stay with a mortar tube. So I didn't know what was going on. Is your platoon steady firing mortars during this time? Right. We were, as a matter of fact, we were firing, firing them so fast that we got two down the tube at one time, which can get a little uh, hairy. hairy. So, uh, you know, because the sound is so loud, you, you just miss that it hadn't gone out yet, you know. Uh -huh. So, um, uh it was just the loudest, you know it's like, it, yeah. and it, it's hard to think, you're yelling at the guy next to you because, um, so we, not, not me particularly, but there were guys down there, you know, hand to hand and grenade to grenade and, and all that stuff. And How far did they get from where you uh, were to the, to the fence where they penetrated, how far away were they from you? From me, about, I don't know, 30 meters. But there was a bomb crater in between there. Uh -huh. They'd had to come around this way as opposed to going through the bomb crater. Um, I guess they could have, but um, uh, I had no idea that they were that close. So were you firing your mortars to come in where about where they had breached the wire, or were you catching them further? Well, 
I was just breaking out the rounds. I'm, yeah. an, I, you know, this is really my first real big experience at this. So, uh, you know, taking the, the safety pins off them, sticking them, you know, and then they go to the mortar tube. Yeah. So I'm not sure exactly where they're firing. All right. So at that time, were you a, what I used to call a gun bunny? Yep. The guys that are dropping. Oh no, no, that diffusing and dropping, diffusing and no. dropping. No. Are you the gun bunny or no? No, you have the gunner who's yeah. who does the sights. Right. You know, just keep the bubbles level sure. on the sight, and the uh, the a gunner is the guy that drops in. So right. as soon as the sights are are set, then you drop the round down. And so I'm just one of the guys in the trench, you know, going and getting as many rounds You're as you. Yeah, I'm just breaking out. You know. Okay. So, and that's the way it works in a mortar squad, yeah, right. you know. So, uh, after a while, it, it settled down a little bit. The clouds are in. So, um, we're trying to get medevacs in, and they can't find the hill. So, the HST guy, helicopter support something or other, um, he had to pop a, a flare so that the helicopters could see, okay, you see that flare, that's where you come straight down and that's where the landing zone is so uh, uh, most of the guys that died that night they had their legs blown off you know just from so many frags coming in and we I think we only had one guy that survived uh, out of that um, so we had basically seven KIAs killed in action yeah a um, lot of wounded you know, that were down around that first platoon area where they came came up the hill, and I'm on the top of the hill. Uh, you know, it's kind of like this. Um, and I just didn't know that was going on. So the, the NVA took out all the crew served weapons that, you know, the machine yeah. guns or rockets and mortars. And uh, um, they took out your mortars? Yeah, they took out. They just took out everything yeah. that was crew served on that uh -huh. side. And th the amazing thing was for me, I had been in that platoon before down at Fubai got moved over to Jimmy Appleman's squad. And you know, you know how that works. Yeah. It's wow. How did that happen? You know. So um, God had a better plan. Yes, for you. the Lord had a had a different plan for me, and um, so um, we're all praying for you know the the sun to come up so it burns off the fog, and and um, by that How long time did the attack last. Would you say? Well, it started about three in the morning, yeah. and sun came up. 6 37 o'clock something like that was it over by then yeah it was it was long over by then they didn't you know they didn't get but i don't know 30 or 40 meters inside the wire um it's far enough yeah it's, it was far enough but yeah. uh um How you know those enemy ki do you know oh gosh i couldn't i more than more than 20 Oh, I'm sure there was. Yeah. There were there were some some uh, dead NVA out on that. They came up this finger. Um, uh, I think they had been running trials, you know, several nights before, just to, uh -huh. you know. So uh, they were on drugs, you know, um, yeah. and. Uh, uh, at that point, it was okay. Let's go clean up the mess, you know, and starting to get the guys out. And uh, um, you lost seven guys. We lost, think. yes, I, I believe so, something like that. And then w we had some guys that were really severely wounded. And some guys, you know, just get a piece of shrapnel or something, and it wasn't it wasn't too bad. So, so you, basically, you couldn't get the dust offs in until after the attack was over. Right. Right. Um, These wounded were probably two and a half, three hours before they could get out. Yeah, yeah. because they, they, when they came through the wire, it was just a hail of grenades from what um, yeah. uh, one of the guys told me. Yeah. And he said it was just one right after another after another. And, I mean, they knew what they're doing, and they were good oh, soldiers. Yeah. But, um, 
we determined this is this is our hill, yep. and you can't have it, you know. Although if that other battalion had come the other way, then it, you know, I might not be here. But so this uh, was February fifth. February fifth, right? Nineteen sixty-eight. Nineteen sixty-eight. So this was basically six days after the start of the Tet Offensive. Somewhere in there. I, I don't remember what the official date yeah, was. No, no, but, I right. Know, I know. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to share this story with you because you were you were right in the Caseon area. I was with an infantry unit in the First Infantry Division, and the morning of February the second, we received a telex, which is the for those of you who are millennials. <laughs> That's what it was before emails and faxes. Right. That's yeah. how we got messages. Uh -huh. And we received a communique that said that Quezon, the combat base, had taken 1,300 122 millimeter rockets in a five hour period of time. Yeah. You recall that. Oh, man. Do you remember them taking that kind of incoming fire? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, because they came right over our hill from yeah. Laos. Because they were dug into those rock hills, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I remember when those rockets would come over, it was just—I don't know if it was concussion, not concussion, but the sound waves or something. I remember just kind of doing this when they came over. It's the most terrifying sound. I've it's ever it's heard horrible, life. you know. I don't know what those German. Uh, what do they call those rockets those when, or the Russians, right. you know, that yeah. just must have been awful. Rockets. But this was, yeah. yeah, this was pretty bad. And, and we'd watch the rounds land down there and I'm thinking, man, I'm sure glad I'm not down there. Yeah. But um, uh, fortunately they didn't, they could have wiped us all out if they'd have tried yeah. on our hill. It wouldn't have taken much at all. What was your rank in February 68? Somewhere up there, I got promoted to Lance Corporal, which is okay. E3. Yeah. I think I was a PFC then. Okay. You know, um, you know, I'm the low man on the food chain, just about. <laughs> so, you know, if they say, you go do this, then you go do that, you right. know. So, um, it's just whatever they wanted done, you know, filling sandbags and digging trenches and things like that. And so that's what we did. And you, what was the particular hill you were on? I was on Hill 861 Alpha, and 861 was ah, 300 meters away or something. Okay. It was a little higher. How did you get your resupply of ammunition, food, medical supplies? So well, they had to, uh, they called it a gaggle, so they have all those 46s, okay. CH-46 helicopters. And I remember them shooting one down one day and he landed down at the hill of our, we could see him down there and, you know, then they formed the, circled the wagons, you know, and one landed and got the crew out and um, I don't remember whether, I'm sure they used it as, as an artillery target just to get rid of it, you know, yeah, but sure. uh, it was, something was going on <laughs> on that hill all the time. Uh, actually, we had, um, the uh, Arvin Air Force dropped napalm on the side of our hill, which was exciting. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and I'm assuming this was somebody called in some bad coordinates. Yeah, I don't know. You know, see point. that hill there? Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be Marines, but let's uh, let's see what they cook off, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so they're going to have a Marine barbecue. Courtesy <laughs> yeah. Of, courtesy yeah. Of the right. So, um, okay, so after this big battle you had on, um, on February 5th, 68, were you wounded at all? No, and I, hey, I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just, it was just attrition after that. It yeah. was, you know, learning, okay, from nine o'clock until two in the afternoon, they're going to mortar you, so stay, you know. Well, yeah. it took a little trial and error to learn that, and, uh, um, it, it was just, I'm probably going to die up here anyway, so I may as well have as much fun as I can, you know, which is uh, digging, um, you know, it was, so you write letters and you do all that yeah. stuff. And, yeah, I, uh, I've heard it described by others 
uh, and it sort of fit my own personal experience. It was 40 hours of boredom interrupted by 10 right. seconds of start. There. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. tell me about after February 5th. Did you have any other significant contacts on Hill 861A? No, nobody tried to take the hill again. It it was just whoever that NVA mortar tube down there that we can't find. Yeah. Well, they were good, and they just we had guys, uh, you know, guys co uh, replacements <coughs> coming in, and you know, uh, start taking incoming because when the helicopters come in, you know how that works, and. Um, <laughs> They were going right, call a helicopter back because, you know, he's dead. And yeah. so it was just. It was Did just, you stay there through your entire tour? No, no, no. We, um, somewhere in April, um, we got word somewhere in there that, that the guy at DNB and Food, General Jap, yeah. oh, he's just brought another couple of divisions by. And just in case you're bored. You know, so I remember that night, uh, everybody's on red alert because Jap's here and he's, you know. And Jap, for those of you that are listening, is spelled G-I-A-P. Right. G-I-A-P, yes. he was the supreme commander of the North Vietnamese Army. Right. Um, that kind of the, was the mastermind of both Jin Bin Phu mm -hmm. as well as the other offenses. Right. So, so we, ahead, we had, no, 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 I'm, I'm glad I'm you the, did I'm that. The, uh, I'm the voice of... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I've become a relic um, of the history center. Right. So um, we had we had the uh, first time they dropped sensors along trails that right. they could tell who was coming, and that was one of the ways that Colonel Beg or Major Beg understood that we were about to get hit. Um, he just misread something, um, and I'm not speaking ill of him at all because yeah. he boy the work he did was just tremendous mm -hmm. so we had the b-52s and um you know you don't even want to get close to one of those arc lights you know lights, so yeah. um it was just every day um we had to start stockpiling chow because they couldn't always resupply so we were start we got down to meal a day and half canteen of water a day and so we were we were getting pretty hungry and you know I'm not going to use it to brush my teeth I'm just gonna you know it was we were dirty and smelly and you know, you know, yeah, know. Um, so it was it was a relief to get off that hill um, we went up to 861 uh, up at 861, they hadn't taken all their sea ration empties and thrown them over the wire. They just left them there, so we had rats up there. And um, uh, I'm sure they were doing um, uh, WWE, you know, at night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you'd have rats crawling on you at night, and you know, it just holy yeah. macro, can this get any worse, you know? Yeah. So, uh, uh, and then during the day, we, we were going back down to the Alpha and, you know, clearing the landmines, yeah, yeah, and all that stuff, getting all the mortar rounds and rocket rounds, and so, that, you know, get them in a sling so you can, and then we started losing other guys up there. So, it was just from how... The incoming fire or... Yeah, from yeah. incoming. From, and, uh, and I, Jim, I know you're, you are being... Uh, general here, but I know from what I've read about all those hills around Quezon, you guys were taking a pounding on a daily basis. And and from what I know, and you can confirm this or not, but uh, that you would you could sometimes get mortared at 10 in the morning while you're trying to have a cup of coffee and sometimes at 1 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. So you weren't getting sleep because you didn't know when to relax if you could have a Well, we had one short round from Quezon. Yeah. It just didn't clear the hill. One more mm -hmm. click on the elevation. Yeah, right. And I heard it come over, and it, when it hit, it hit so close, and it, it hit a, a bunker, mm -hmm. killed a couple of Marines, and, you know, and now I 
Carmichael, you know. Friendly fire. Yeah, it was friendly fire. And, um, uh, you know, they didn't know what hit them, which yeah. was, you know, good. And uh, so it was just it was just something all the time. Carrie, relative yeah. to what you said, yeah. people got to understand K-Sun was in the northwest corner of the I Corps. Mm -hmm. It was the first combat base that you came to. As soon as you crossed over the DMZ. Well, you went around the DMZ and came in, what, from Laos, yeah. Cambodia, whatever mm -hmm. it was. That was, the first com that was the first combat base that came under. And I, too, and Carol took short rounds from Kaysan. They couldn't shoot. <laughs> well, it was the most <coughs> exposed base, it was. Uh, combat was base in violence. Vietnam. So you were taking fire from North Vietnam and from Laos, am I right? I mean, gosh, I, I, you know, my <coughs> little piece of that hill was my whole universe, you know, uh -huh. and I don't know what's going on. I can see the rounds landing down at, you know, at the base, and it, nobody has it easy any place around here, I, you know. We we take the the uh, radio batteries that were used and hook up your transistor radio and you could catch the the news and so forth. Well, everybody was getting hit, you know. Yeah. So we're thinking, is is the whole country just going to implode or what's going on yeah. here? And it was it was as much a, a political media victory as it was anything else. They didn't win. No. But, you know, you've got the media on, you know, right. that loves that kind of thing. And so we came off and now we're the bad guys. And, you know, so it was um, there were there were some humorous things that went on. We got we got ice cream one night. The helicopter landed and they gave <coughs> us ice cream, you know, these little Dixie cup things. Yeah. Well, by that time, your stomach's shrunk. And the ice cream just went right through us, you know, so you'd only eat one of them, you know, and we're going to save them. And anybody got a refrigerator? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, no, this is going to be gone in the morning and everybody's, you know, running out and using the bathroom, you right. know, and uh uh, holy you know, milk mackerel. Milk didn't last yeah. very long. <laughs> <No. just> <laughs> yeah. So it was, um, gosh, it was just every day, okay. Well, I'm here at sunset. I made it through another one, but who knows, you know. So, so when they moved you from uh, Hill Alpha, 816 Alpha, and they, or say 861 Alpha, they moved you to 861. Did mm -hmm. that then become your your duty station at that point? Right. Um, you know, I don't remember what the what the scuttlebutt was once we got up there. Oh, we're only going to be here for, you know, at night you're fighting the rats and, and uh, you know, it, during the day you're just trying to, okay, just aim the mortar tube over another 20 degrees and right. you got yeah. fresh targets. So um, their LZ was kind of in the middle of the hill. Uh-huh. So there was no grass, no nothing. So when the helicopters would land there, you've just got a dust storm. Yeah. And um, so we stayed up there a week or two, something like that. Um, uh, I think Fox, Trot, and uh, Golf had to take the hill below us so that we could walk off of 861, um, get down to battalion. And uh, I remember watching that firefight. Was battalion headquarters down there? Right, at 558. And um, uh, so there we... There was a firefight? Well, it was a firefight to clear that hill of North Vietnamese so that we could do this, go down, yeah. go down that way. So we humped off the hill and, and you know, well, now they're going to kill us going down the hill, you know, so... Yeah. Um, we got down to battalion. Well, battalion had deserted that area. They'd gone wherever it is they went. And so all the bunkers are there and we occupied the bunkers and, and then we experienced heavy artillery down there. Uh, we lost four corpsmen in one round. Uh, there was a, there was a creek down there and, um, you know, 
I want to go get all the scuzz off my body. And so I, I was still back up in one of the bunkers and I heard the rounds come in. And uh, then I heard Corman up, you know what that means. And uh, uh, they were walking four abreast and uh, one round, it was a rocket came in and just took them out. 122. Yeah, they'd been through the whole thing and we were just a couple of days away from getting out of there. And uh, uh, so I was thinking, we're not getting out of here. That's yeah. just a pipe dream, you know? So, um, and then when the helicopters came in and, you know, we got some altitude, it was like, what did we just do? Yeah. It was very anticlimactic. You know, it wasn't like the reporters are out there, you men are going and you made it through all this stuff. And I kept waiting for the soundtrack. <laughs> you know, we'd, be big, we'd be in some huge contact, and afterwards I'd be sitting on a lot right, of yeah. thinking, what's the damn soundtrack that John Wayne always had? Yeah. yeah, it was just, it was like, oh, it's over? You know, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. we got on the helicopters and flew us to Camp Carroll, and you know, I got off, or you know, we landed and Camp Carroll at Fubai. No, it's Camp Carroll. Camp Carroll. Right. I don't remember Camp what. Camp Carroll was headquarters, Third Marine Division. Okay, okay, so maybe battalion went there. I I don't yeah. know, but um, I remember getting off the helicopter. The guy in front of me slipped and fell, and I went head over tea kettle and you know I think oh man I'm gonna die you know this is so there's nothing but targets running around they got no place to put yeah. these guys and um, the one of the guys in our mortar squad had a coke and it was cold that was the best <laughs> coke I ever drank you know or at least got some of it and you know we settled in and then they started shooting heavy artillery at Camp Carroll um, uh, and that's where the 175s were. Yeah. You know, the big howitzers. Oh, and, yeah. uh, man, when those things go off, you know, we were about 30 meters from them, and nobody said, oh, by the way, here it goes, you know, and they just pull that whoop, yeah. and oh, my gosh. The, the so, rounds are so big on a 175 oh. howitzer that they have to be loaded in the breech block with a hydraulic loader. Because yeah. Because two guys can't push the shell in the tube. But they were accurate. Holy oh, yeah. mackerel, they were accurate. Yeah. You must have been living in the quarters we built. Probably so. We were. You actually had a hooch? Yeah, we did. Yeah. There were bunkers. Yeah. I don't know who was in there before, but, you know, we had a bunker. MCB-10 and... was in there. It, say again? It, MCB-10 was in there. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, I know it wasn't going to stop a North Vietnamese 152 artillery, <laughs> but <laughs> it was, you know, if it rains, we... Protection. Yeah. Maybe a mortar round, but... Uh, it wouldn't even have done that. Oh. Okay, well, at any rate, I'm still <coughs> got my whole body here, and I... It at least made you feel secure, though, because you had a roof <laughs> over your head for the first time. Maybe yeah, you know, maybe if I put my helmet and then a flak jack over it and climbed under the helmet, <laughs> then uh, I might have a chance, but... Yeah. but uh, oh, well. Well, the minute we figured out that the roof was a tent... You knew you weren't very safe. Yeah, but. yeah no, I was wasn't yeah. in one of those things. Yeah. So, uh, at any rate, yeah, it was, um, uh, it was just kind of refitting and you know all that. And so, uh, did you stay in Camp Carroll with your unit with Echo Company? Right. I uh, realized I was having trouble seeing, and so I, I ended up down at Da Nang to get some glasses. Well, my mom sent me the civilian prescription, and they looked at it and said, thank you for coming, but, you know, uh, we don't do civilian prescriptions. So uh, I, when I, I got to Da Nang, I got on a bus. You mean you didn't have a Pearl Vision Center? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I got on this bus, and, uh, you know, they got the screens on the bus because they were taking it. Well, yeah. this kid got on there with shower shoes, swimming suit, and a towel. And I am looked like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
what's wrong with this picture? What did, did I did I get off of planet Earth and land on Mars? Or, that's what it felt like, you know. Got the wrong MO. I get, I yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I said, where are you going? I'm going swimming, you know. Yeah. You, you're doing what? <laughs> <laughs> do they still do that, you know? And it was just, it was like being another planet. Yeah. You know, and. That's uh, what I felt when I came home. Yeah. I, I, you know, people were just walking around like everything was normal. Right. And there, nothing was normal for me anymore. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I got back up to my unit and. Um, uh, you guys miss me? No, not yeah, really, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, we did um, Camp Carroll, and then we humped over to uh, the river, which, do you remember how far that river was, Ed? No, I do not. Very honestly, I don't even remember a river. Okay, well, there was a river not yeah, too far. Yeah, the one that goes into the, um, perfume? the river. river. The Perfume River, yeah. Um, well, at any well, rate, there was one around Carol. There wasn't. No. Well, there was a river down there we ended up with, and we were getting, you know, replacements in, and and so we set up down there, and. Uh, I never uh, liked the rivers because when you crossed them, you always came out with leeches. On on your <laughs> private parts. Well, <laughs> for me, it was always the rice patties, you know. Right, that's, really? Let's yeah. dump a bunch of leeches, leeches in here. Yeah, and uh, Rice patties, too. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it was the first time we were able to actually yeah. get the, you know, crud off of us. And uh, um, so... so when you went, were you patrolling then? Were y'all running patrols? No, we were, just, we were just around there. Uh, yeah. We, you know, I, I don't know who's organizing this thing so our mortar tubes up on the there's this little hill there and uh i remember there was this tree stump up there these are 81s we're talking about, no right? i was in 60s oh you were in they 60s? trained me in 81s yeah. gave me two hours on the 60 and they put me in 60s oh. you know they yeah. they could have made me a a pilot for you know so uh you know the army gave you the 60s and and because we wanted to be rid of them, all we had was 81, all we had was 81s and four yeah. deuces. Oh we well, had. yeah. Well, the army got everything better than we did. Let's just oh, give it to the Marines. Right. You know, yeah, if it doesn't right. work, give it to the Marines. So, at any yeah. rate, uh, yeah. I uh, things that stand out were yeah. all of a sudden out of this tree stump come all these scorpions. Yeah. I mean, there must have been 10 or 20 of them coming out of this thing. Mama's up there somewhere, and I'm thinking, this is not a good place to sleep. <laughs> so, um, you know, we killed them all, but yeah. it was just, oh, gosh, how many ways you can you, you die here, yeah. you know? Right. So and these were the little ones. These weren't yeah. the big oh, I've seen those big, big ones, yeah. you know. You uh -huh. said you saw the, the uh, centipedes. Yeah. Yeah. I got Which, bitten by one. Oh, it, did you? Yeah, it raised a welt. I, they almost had to dust, you know, dust me off back because the welt got infected. It was on my leg, and I could show you still to this day. I've still got a thing where they Here, see that right there. Okay, <laughs> centipedes were horrible. Holy mackerel! And they just didn't stop when they, no, you know, you're no. digging a, you're digging a trench, and all of a sudden you see this, the dirt, and he just keeps coming out of that, That's you right. know, and they're about this long, and going, good they grief! Were, they, were, they were as long, about half as long as a ruler, six to eight <sighs> inches. Man, yeah. so at any rate, it was just, um, so from there we moved on a little bit. We were heading over to Contien. Yeah. Okay. So we got to Contien and um, uh, another lovely. Place. Yeah, another. There was Contien and there was there was a little river, creek or something down there, mm -hmm. and there was what they called the washout. So they had tanks and well, I felt pretty good with those tanks yeah. around That's there, right. you know. And um, uh, oh, there's a river. <sighs> there were sea crabs. In that river, I'm thinking. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I have no idea, but they were these little things with the, you know, the yeah. pinchers. Yeah. And I thought, 
none of this making any sense here, you know? Uh, next thing I'm looking for is alligators or something, you know, and, and, or a giraffe maybe. <laughs> uh, um, so we st the CBs, love you guys, you, you made the bunker like this. So when it rains, it just, you know, it's we got our own swimming pool here, you know. That's right. Yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. So at any rate, uh, from there, um, there's an in incident I want to say, but it was kind of it was kind of gross. Well, I, we need to hear it oh. the way it happened. Well, I had already gone uh, on R and R, so I heard about this when the guys were were at. So you got the officer's head and you got the enlisted head. Okay, right. you know what that looks like. You got yeah. the the 55 gallon drums with the. That's a restroom. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. So um, we had a kid named Harry Smiley. He's from New York. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm from Texas, so I like to hear these guys talk. Yeah. I've, I've seen it on TV, but I've never been, been around it, you right. know. So you're supposed to burn that stuff. You know, so you pour in, uh, what is it, diesel, kerosene, kerosene. kerosene diesel, yeah. whatever we could get. It's probably diesel because of the tanks. Yeah. Well, Harry, instead of getting a match, put a thermite grenade. <laughs> okay, <laughs> really? Well, all the, what didn't burn went downhill and burned down the officers. <laughs> I, I was crying uh, when, I, when, I, when he said that, you know. Guess what Smiley did, you know. And, <laughs> and he's, he's a big guy. Yeah. It's, you know, there's a box of rocks and, you know. Right. I, I, no, I, if I see Harry again, he, you know, but. Uh, so he burned down the officer's head. So he burned down the officer's head, and yeah. that was probably the funniest thing that, you know, and I didn't even get to see it. So, yeah. um, at any rate, uh, from Contien, I got my orders, went to Quang Tree. Quang Tree. Uh -huh. They put me on line watch, and then that's where I got bit by a mosquito, you know, it was half as big as a B-52, you yeah. know, and they're flying around and... Yeah, they take uh, off in formation. They, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. they got tail numbers on them, you know, and, yeah. and he bit me and I, you know, I got on the airplane to go to, uh, I was going to meet my, my parents and uh, my girlfriend there in Hawaii. Yeah. So I wanted the seven day one. I didn't yeah. want to go to, you know, wherever. So uh, when I got off the airplane, something's wrong here. <laughs> I don't feel real good. That malaria. Yeah. So I had a couple of days. My parents are there, and uh, my mom, I started hallucinating, and, you know, um, my mom just started freaking out, you know, and. So we we're up in the hotel and, you know, the Navy came and, you know, got the gurney and, you know, loaded me up. And it's like May or June of 68? Uh, June. It June. was right during Bobby Kennedy got, was assassinated. My wife was at that point, my girlfriend. Right fourth, right yeah, she That's was, good. her airplane to fly to Hawaii had to, had to, uh, hold because you know they were doing his body and you know taking it so um, yeah that's I'd forgotten that so uh, um, you know now I'm at Tripler Army Hospital and in the malaria ward and uh, I probably lost 50 pounds in a week you know because it's coming out both ends and and um, they give you that the the medication that turns your urine orange so, you know, from here down was orange, and uh, it was just, yeah. holy mackerel. So, um, you know, and I'm in there with these other guys that, you know, and they're all screwed up as I am, you know. And um, so my fiance um, arranged to, after my mom and dad went back, they arranged to, uh, uh, stay with some folks that was in their church, and so I could get a pass to 
go stay out on the weekend, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, um, so after a while, it was just trying to get your strength back. And I don't know how those guys in World War II fought with yeah. with that kind of stuff. It's uh, at any rate, uh, you know. So, so where was the hospital you were in? It was on Oahu. Okay. Near Schofield Barracks. Now I don't know. I'm not real sure where anything was. You know, it's just this was my. There's downtown Honolulu, which you have to go through to get to where she was, and and where anything else is, I didn't really care. Um, uh, all I knew was I was out of the bush, <laughs> but because I didn't take my malaria pill, you know how that works. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the company now is on notice. Uh, everybody's, you know, the corpsmen are starting to check and make yeah. sure you take, you know, well, they didn't think too much of me after that. So, um, so I got to stay, I don't know, an extra month or something um, in Honolulu till they said, okay, you're, you don't have the kind that's recurring. There's the next airplane. You're on it. And you went back to Nam. I went back to Nam and, um, uh, when I got back, uh, discovered our company was now, or battalion was now battalion landing team, ready reserve, and so we're out on the Princeton and the Dubuque, uh -huh. um, which were two ships. One was an old Jeep carrier kind of thing. Yeah. They converted it to helicopters, and ours, I was on the Dubuque, <clears throat> It had a well deck in there so they could do the Amtrak things and and you could land a couple of helicopters on the uh -huh. on the back of it and uh, so when somebody got in trouble there's Echo or Golf or who, whomever and um, so we we did you know that kind of thing for for a while. Did you get deployed off the off the we ship did. On uh, the back? To the country. One one day we were uh, we got called out and so we're coming up from the bowels of the ship up through the mess deck and out and they were the H thirty fours remember those old yeah, Korean sure. looking things well yeah. um, they were both lifting off and one of them started doing this right back at us you know and he's losing power and and I don't know that he's gonna come join us in the mess deck or what, but um, he finally got off the, the, the ship and he, I thought, uh-oh, those guys are done, you know, yeah. and, but it, somehow I got control of it and uh, so, you know, this was the, I don't know if this was an omen about this that coming up thing or not, but um, so they came back and and we got on a helicopter and you know you can only get six or seven guys in one of those things so um, we took off and um, he our helicopter landed it, it must have had a sign the smelliest rice paddy in Vietnam is right here please land here you know so the stuff's coming over the you know I'm going I gotta jump out into that and uh, oh it stunk did you have your backpacks on? Your oh on? yeah, it was yeah. just everything, you know. Yeah. And so you're keeping Rain your, season. yeah. <laughs> so you know, uh, there was no river to you know wash off with, and so it was just oh, we smelled. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, we were we were doing that thing, and um, so did you hit when you hit the ground? Were you immediately in contact? Or? No. No, it, wasn't it was a hot LZ, right? <clears throat> it wasn't a hot LZ. Um, those are very unpleasant. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, it was just let's make them stink, you know. And you know, the pilot's up here; he's not, yeah. you know, he's not getting out. No, there, he's not getting out of the helicopter, and and so we jump out, and you know, and everybody else is landing on dry land, and <laughs> thought, how did he manage that? You know, oh, you smell so. You know, we did that for a while. I don't remember exactly what we did, yeah. but you know, we're after that we're back on the ship again, and um, uh, you know, the Navy Chow, good, good stuff, good, good food, sheets and on uh, your, sheets on yeah, your sheets on the, <clears throat> and it was it was just a really nice 
uh, thing and <coughs> we did a practice. They took us up just below the DMZ and they practiced, you know, the John Wayne um, Amtraks and, you know, well, they don't tell you that you probably die from monoxide poisoning before you ever get out of the thing, you know, because everybody's cranked up and and the fumes are not going anywhere. They're just staying, you know, hovering around. And so we got in this thing, <coughs> coffin thing, and, you know, here's your Mae West. And so they shoot us off the back and we went down and I thought, you know, what happens when we hit the bottom and we don't go anywhere and I've got this Mae West. Well, just, you know, you go up here and then you drown. So, but we finally came on up and, uh, uh, you know, this whole battalion thing. Uh -huh. And so we hit the beach and, and you know, the Antos, those uh, recoilless rifle yeah, I, thing. Good we, weapon. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Until they break down. So we're all on the beach, you know, look, look good, boys. The, I'm sure they're filming. Well, I you know, know you guys, if you're Marines, I know you had the photographers there before you got there. <laughs> What happened was there's these kids out there with these trays and they're selling stuff, you know, and we're hitting the beach and this is, who thought this one up, you know? So Cecil B. DeMille. Yeah, Cecil yeah. B. DeMille. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the, somebody said the on toast broke down. Yeah. We're going back to the ship. Okay. The Antos <laughs> broke down on the beach? I, I don't know where they yeah. broke down. Yeah. They just broke down, so we're canceling this. Okay. I don't know where we were going, why we were going. We were just going, and we looked good, you know? <laughs> and then there are these kids selling stuff, cigarettes and candy and, you know, whatever. And I'm going, where did you come from? So we got back aboard ship, and, you know, it was just stupid stuff like that. And... Well, now, somewhere, I, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying your, your Vietnam, but somewhere <laughs> in here, you earned a silver star. No, no. Time out. I did not get a silver star. It says service medal. Oh, service medal with silver. Service. Okay. Um, no, I don't know why I got the medals that I that I did. I didn't get a silver star. I didn't get a bronze star. I got a yellow stripe down my back, I think. Well, wait a minute. You got the Vietnamese cross again. Oh, tree. well, whatever that means. Everybody you got know, that. everybody got, got that. that. I don't know why I got it. I got two of them. Oh, you did? Yeah. I have no idea why I have those. Well, so, at least, well, at least you had good me. conduct. It said you got the good conduct, man. <laughs> Well, that was that. That was debatable. Depends on who you ask. So you know, I can laugh about it now. It wasn't real funny at the time, no, but it isn't funny at the time. I um, understand that. So, uh, so when you when you were a month in Tripler, and then you had to go back to Vietnam after that month, did mm -hmm. they make you make an extra month? Did they add a month to your tour or? At that point, I wasn't asking. I just, I was back. Here we are, you know. Um, and so they, when we got off, I think this is the right chronology, uh, when we got off the ship for good, um, they took us up to the DMZ. Uh -huh. Okay, so that was my introduction to there's nobody supposed to be in here. This is demilitarized. And that's where everybody was. Yeah. So uh, I'm completely out of shape. And we're going, you know, all over the place. And uh, um, when is this? What's the time frame here? It's in the fall, September, some. September, October, 1968. Yeah, yeah something like that. Uh -huh. um, uh, did you ever get up there? Was that, or do no, you just I was down? Okay. I mean, I, as I said, I got up there a couple times because I was trying to get a hop back to my unit, and the, right. I'd have to go by way of Da Nang or 
Fubai or one of those places, but no, I never got that far. Okay, well, it was, when you got up there, we, we encountered uh, uh, steps built in the, you uh -huh. know, these hills where you got wood there and, you know, they're carrying all their stuff and, yeah. and, um, uh, so you determined that NVA had built these oh, yeah. steps. Well, well, you can't see it from the air, yeah. you know, it's triple canopy, Jungle. whatever. And, and, uh, you know, you could, you could hide a whole division down there and nobody'd see them. Were you blowing stuff up as you were going through? <sighs> I'm sure we were. Yeah. It was just we were, we were just up there, you know. And uh, I, probably the the scaredest I ever was was we were told to take this hill, mm -hmm. you know. I don't want the hill. You guys can have it. Just keep it, you know. Right. So, so uh, we uh, we start, you know, filtering up through the hill. Well, they're on the reverse slope, you know. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to get a bunch of Marines quiet. I, it's, it's just does not part of the yeah. DNA. So we're going up this hill, and all of a sudden we hear these mortar tubes. And I thought, this isn't going to be nice. Yeah. Well, there were these trees that there were no branches until you got maybe 30 or 40 feet up there. Okay. But they had these vines hanging down. They had thorns, you know, and there were just hundreds of them. And so we're going through this thing and you're getting cut and you're bleeding and you know um and then these mortar rounds start you know just like rain and and uh it was one of those things where you okay lord <clears throat> i have a deal for you <laughs> if you have a deal for me i have a deal for you and uh you know the skipper got hit the the exec got hit the company gunny got hit you yeah. know from the mortar from the mortar rounds and this yeah. corpsman behind me i don't know maybe eight five eight meters behind took one right in the chest okay. and and it was one of those things where you could hear his voice uh you know and it just when when somebody said okay we're gonna we're gonna do this again tomorrow but we got too many wounded to, uh you know so uh that was just hamburger you know, when I walked past him, he, that was, it was really strange, but it was one of those things where everybody was just bloody when they came out of there, whether you got hit by anything or not, because we were, uh, you know, those thorns were just grabbing you and, you know, and twisting around you and, and you're trying to move and, yeah. you know, so uh, that was probably the scaredest you know, Quezon was bad enough, but this was no place to go. Yeah. And um, did you uh, eventually take the hill? Or no, somebody did. Came up the other side and yeah. and took it. So, um, but I'm sure we were, you know, we just lost a bunch of guys because there was no place to get behind. There weren't any logs there or anything. So, um, yeah, we had to we. We took a lot of casualties that days day. Where you think, who designed this operation? Yeah, exactly. You know, and they didn't ask me permission or anything yeah. like that. They just said do it. So um, uh, we had the New Jersey Fire Force, that that big ship. Uh -huh. You know, they're shooting those Volkswagens yeah. over, and right. when those when that thing came over, you know, it was just like you know, and it lands and going. Um, so they were going after the, the other side of the hill. They were going after, I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was just, that was, um, I remember we uh, got hella lifted into the DMZ from someplace and uh, uh, they, the NVA had a, a Ford observer out there somewhere. And we got in the tree line, in the trees, and I'm sure he was thinking they're going to keep going. So we just, they were lobbing rounds way over us. We just stopped right there. Uh -huh. um, the Lord and I had another conversation about that time because I figured they were going to do fire and adjust, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're not getting anybody there. Let's back it up here. But um, uh, that was one of those. That was the day that I felt 100 years old. 
you, you know what that feels yeah, yeah. like. I'm 19 or 20, and mm -hmm. I feel 100. You know, it was the weirdest experience, but My I... My mother kept asking me, what are you thinking about? After I got home, I'd be sitting in the living room, and, you know, at that time I had a daughter that was about two years old. She's a lot older than that yeah. now. She was running around, and I, I was just staring past her through her. My mother would say, what are you thinking about? And I, nothing. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't want to tell her what I was thinking about. Didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. So you just, your brain, you're, a circuit breaker goes off in your brain. Yeah, there's lots of things that change And then you become the brain. an old man. Yeah, it really, I just felt old. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to explain it, but well, unless you've been you. there. Um, you. So... Were at you any a, were you an E5 by this point? Oh no, huh? Yeah. I got it. I left uh, country as an E3. Yeah. Um, fortunately, we our mortar squad really didn't lose anybody. Yeah. I don't know why. We certainly tried hard enough, but. Yeah. Um, but the platoon did. Right. Yeah, we were attached to second platoon, I think, and um, you know we were just, yeah. you know how it works, and. Uh, so we ended up at Da Nang on, a, on this huge division size operation called Mead River. And um, uh, they had, I don't know, the most Marines I ever saw in my life. I'm sure there were some Army guys around there too, <clears throat> but uh, we were cordoning off this area around Da Nang because there was supposed to be a division of NVA in there. Fine, I don't really care to take your position. You can have it if you want. But the um, uh, longest convoy I was ever on, uh, it, it went for miles. Uh -huh. You know, nothing but six buys, those big trucks. Yeah. And I remember going through this village and... May, may I ask you a question? Sure. When you left the name, did you go west or did you go south or north? I don't know which way you went. No, I, I, I really don't. The air strip is on the west side of the night. Right. I mean, we could hear the, you know, when those F-4s would oh, take wow. off. So, but I don't remember what direction it was. Um, Quang Tree was south <clears> of the night. Pardon me? I think Quang Tree was south of the night. It was. And <clears throat> no, Quang Tree was north. North. Dong Ha and Quang Tree were north. I thought, it, well, then I've got the wrong idea okay. where Da Nang but was. And Freedom Hill was west. Yeah, it was down around Da Nang somewhere, and, okay. you know, there's a PX up there and all that. Um, that was, well, that was Freedom Hill. That was west. Okay. All right. I, d I don't remember. I, I really don't. There was a bunch of villages there. They were. And, um, uh. My two dog patch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Although I wouldn't have known Dog Patch if I, you know, we'd have run into it. But um, uh, so what happened? Over well, we were going, and and behind us, I heard this explosion, and this big six by is going. You know, he just picked it up and threw it off in a rice paddy. Mm -hmm. You know, and landed on the guys. So I thought we just went over that. You know, it was a command detonated yeah. bomb or whatever, <clears throat> and uh, so. Um, <laughs> well, you just keep going, you know. That's, uh, let me call my mom. She would want to hear about this, you know. So uh, um, we stopped wherever it was we stopped, and, you know, the company's around, and they're hooches and stuff. Well, my mortar squad got put in a pagoda. That's fine. It's got a roof over it. You know, if it yeah. rains, I like this, you know. Well, one day, there's a helicopter lands out on the road, and this one-star general gets out. And he's walking right toward us, you know. Uh, you men aren't doing anything to this pagoda, are you? Uh, no, sir. Uh, well, you wouldn't want uh, the Vietnamese to mess up any of our churches, would you? I said, no, sir. And, uh, you know, we're, we're taking good care of this. We're just sleeping here, mm -hmm. you know. We got in his helicopter and flew off, and I thought, 
okay, this makes a lot of sense, you know. Are you out wasting gas or what what are you doing? You know, it, it was yeah. just ah! so well, um, stars don't have a whole lot of stuff to do like <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. You well, know, he might have done job. something else, but yeah. okay, we're not we're not putting deck cord around the pagoda and blowing it up. We're just yeah. we're just out of the rain. Right. So so um uh you know, you've got uh, the grunts out in front of us and they're running patrols and we're doing you know protecting them and yeah. um, uh, we had to fire a round at night well probably the army has flashlights and stuff like that it's raining and I got a match you know so we have to put the poncho over the you know so you can check the bubbles and make sure they're yeah, we did it we actually had flashlights they just weren't allowed to use them on the fire on the fire night where they had the 105s and the and the mortars, they weren't allowed to use flashlights at night. So I'd see them every once in a while with a zippo. <laughs> okay, well I don't feel yeah. so bad then. Yeah. So no, so it's raining and yeah. you know we got a fire mission and you know the guys. So that was probably my best fire mission and yeah. you know I put it right where they wanted it and we were you know. So um, there was one time down there around Da Nang where. Um, we had heard that there was an NVA coming toward us. Uh -huh. We got the company out in the platoons and there was a big rice paddy between us and and all of a sudden this guy's on our path where the where our mortar tube is set up. Well he's got orders for R and R to Da Nang, you know, yeah. from his outfit. And so um <laughs> <laughs> so one of the one of the guys, a new guy in our in our uh, mortar squad, shoots him, and the guy jumps over in the rice paddy, you know, and and it's a big big rice paddy dike here, you know. So you gotta you gotta do this to get a grenade over there, and so um, <laughs> so the water's going up like we're having a ball, you know. Uh -huh. This guy's not gonna live through it, or we're gonna use a lot of grenades here tonight, you know, and. Uh -huh. uh, um, so this is an NVA on uh, this is an NVA on 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 shore leave and and uh, he diddy bopping down the trail <laughs> and you know he just so they caught him you know and brought him over and you'd have thought we had we all had won the congressional you know we'd all you know we've got a prisoner <laughs> big deal you know so um, there were times when uh, there was. Some little NVA over in a tree line about 500 meters away. Mm -hmm. um, he's cranking off a few rounds just here and there, you know, just to kind of yeah. keep you. Five million dollars of ordnance. <laughs> ba -ba -boom, ba -ba -ba -boom, ba -ba -ba boom. Twenty minutes later, yeah. crack, crack, crack. <laughs> well, we either got him, and you know, his brother came along, so. Ten million dollars of ordnance, you know, crack, crack, crack. Um, uh, okay, whatever, That's you know. Enough, huh? Well, let's. Why don't you just shoot over a bunch more, you know? And so it was. At that time, I I just quit saying, "Why are we doing this?" Yeah. Is it, you know. Um, you know the three monkeys. You know here, yeah. no, it, they're they're leading this thing, and so um, um, we they took us out in the helicopters, and uh, uh, we flew around, and there was a little Vietnamese out hoeing. You know, well, he drops his hoe and he picks up his AK, and he, you know, yeah. about the time we've banked over this way in those H thirty fours. And I was I was on the 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 bulkhead, the side, looking uh -huh. right down at him, yeah. you know. And he's obviously got me in his sights. I yeah. just you know. <laughs> and then the you know the crew chief, you know, Let's did his machine it. gun, and I thought, oh man. So um, we went back and um, we played Marine Corps for a little while longer, and they. We got we got into a, a chow hall. I don't know if it's yours or or navies or what have you, mm -hmm. and um, 
They had ice cream. I like ice cream. I really like ice cream. They also had a lot of beer, you know. Yeah, it sounds like an army. Okay. Yeah, because we didn't have any the whole yeah. time we were there, you yeah, know. We and were in base camp, we got beer. Yeah. We, you know, we did. We never did. So, um, the company got drunk. Okay. I didn't get drunk um, because I knew, as sure as the world, somebody's going to say, move out. Where yeah. are you? We were, in, we were around Da Nang someplace. Yeah. I'm sure I'm messing up this chronology, right, but, okay. um, you know, being around sober Marines is bad enough. Being around drunk Marines who are going through this village at night and everybody, you know, and, you know, laughing and so forth. And I thought, we're just, this, this is nuts. This is just nuts. Who thought this up, you know? Well, I'm only a Lance Corporal, but I can see this is stupid. So, um, we ended up getting where we were supposed to. I have no idea how, because I'm somewhere in the middle of this, you know, yeah. disaster. Mm -hmm. And, um, <laughs> okay. I, I give up. I'll just do whatever you want me to do, and then I'm going to get home, because I'm on my short Short, You're the uh, short timer. Short timer calendar, and uh, so um, uh, we did the. We got around uh, somewhere in this process. We were around the the Korean Marines. Uh -huh. Did you ever? Were you ever around any yeah, rock rocks. Marines? Yeah, uh -huh. we worked with them down. Uh, my first base camp was a base camp called Zeon, which was north of Saigon, about fifty clicks, something like that. And in the compound with us was a, a rock compound, and they were rock marines and army, both in the same compound. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, that was great. Yeah, troops. yeah. Well, you know, while we're doing whatever we're doing, these these rock marines, uh, you'd see one of them with a backpack full of bricks, and he's walking, you know. Yeah. And then ten minutes later, it comes another guy down, you know, and I'm going, he's "What are you guys doing?" Off to the sergeant. Yeah, probably, yeah. you know. So um, we. We went to their uh, fort, mm -hmm. whatever it was, and they got claymores all over. You know, I mean, yeah. you don't want to attack a rock compound. So uh, I'm getting ready to, getting close to rotating out. And uh, they had, uh, we had brand new rain suits. I'm rotating out and we now get brand new rain suits. So one of these rock Marines, says he'll trade me you know well hey I'm getting out of here I'm used to being soaked anyway so so I traded him he gave me a rock marine uh, utility jacket yeah. uh, fatigues uh -huh. and uh, I thought wow this is it's 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 in Korean but yeah. it's still the you know mm -hmm. um, that was that was really it, it was kind of neat you yeah. know exchange and then they're they're cooking their kimchi which is Holy mackerel! Put that stuff out, you know. Yeah. Um, it's only it's only edible when it's fermented. That's uh, what yeah. They told me. yeah, yeah. Well, it was just no. Uh, I don't, mm -hmm. you know. I'll stick with sea rations, which I hope I never have to eat again yeah. in my whole life. So, um, so we, um, I guess the last, uh, the last hurrah when I was, you know, it was a week to go, something like that. Um, we got online and we were moving into this, a lot of bamboo and, you know, um, uh, mounds of stuff and um, uh, we got in there and we noticed these stairs going down. You know, well, they, you're in the they, DMZ now. No, no, oh, this is the Da Nang. Yeah, we're somewhere. still on Mead River, um, mm -hmm. and they've got bunkers down there, and you know, you guys can have it if you want. Mm -hmm. And then they opened up. That was probably the worst ambush I'd ever walked into because mm -hmm. it was just, um, I mean, there was stuff coming from, and I never saw where they were coming from. You know, it was just out there in front of us somewhere, and. Um, uh, that was that was difficult, you know, and and then all of a sudden it stopped, 
and <laughs> I'm still alive, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I, I, you know, shoot at it. Shoot at what? You know, yeah. I just, they're out there, but I don't know where it is. And, and um, so uh, um, from then on, we, uh, we got a, a call from one of the platoons that they'd gotten a VC prisoner down there. So the skipper, uh, Lieutenant St. John, <clears throat> got two radio operators and me. Mm -hmm. uh, skipper, I'm going mm -hmm. home in three days. Could we, could we find somebody else? So I'm the third man in this four-man patrol, and we're walking along these rice paddies, and there's no water in them, but we're out in the open. And I'm thinking, well... Does he die here now or, you know? So we, you know, got to the tree line and took a left and there was a little uh, uh, rise and there's old rusty barbed wire. And so um, the skipper going down the other side of it got tangled up in it. And the radio operator in front of me w got up there and he stepped on a mine. And so I got the skipper in the back and blew him up in the air. And I'm thinking, where's the next round coming? I'm not used to booby traps, you know. Yeah, sure. So I immediately stuck my muzzle in the, you know, getting down. And I've got dirt and mud, grass in, the, in my muzzle. I got three days left and I'm going what's wrong with this picture? Yeah. You know, well, I forgot about the radio operator behind me and he's calling in and saying, okay, here's, here's what we got. And I ran through this rice paddy. And it, I, killed, it killed the skipper? No, um, made him wish he was dead, but uh, no, he died <clears throat> uh, back in the States. I don't know whether it was from that. I don't know what happened to the radio operator, but um, uh, uh, it killed your point man that stepped on the mine. Well, it probably did. Um, I didn't see what happened to him after that because I'm waiting for the next round to come in. And um, I just, like I said, I'd forgotten about him. And mm -hmm. by the time I got back to the, you know, I just ran through the rice paddy yeah. and um, got there. And they said, oh, we already know about that. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they, you know, they did what they did with the with the wounded and um um so uh we had you know a puff that c47 yeah. we had them over us all night and Got uh, the gun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and but you know they're they're dropping out those illumination flares well there's a there's a big cartridge on there that when it goes that cartridge goes yeah. thunk well, he's flying over us all night long, and I'm thinking, well, I'm going to get impaled with a with one of these rounds, because <laughs> you can hear him going thunk, thunk, yeah. thunk, you know, and and uh, uh, <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> so uh, next day is my day out, yeah. you know. So there's boom bamboo all over the place, and. I was not where I should have been. Yeah. I'm waiting for a helicopter all day long. Well, I'm going to go over and see so and so. Uh -huh. and, well, that wasn't a good idea because Lieutenant Louie was looking for me, and he, when he found me, he was not too happy. And um, he said, "Get your gear and get out of here." Yeah. So I got on the helicopter, and uh, you know, the first thing you look for is all that spent brass. You know, well, this is one of the milk runs. They're just flying guys out of the bush and getting them to, you know, taking the mail or whatever. And, you Ash know, the crew chief is, yeah, uh -huh. the crew chief is bored to tears. And uh, I was, it was like coming out of case on it. I was, yeah. oh, I'm done. They landed me at the Naval Air Station. Yeah. In San Diego or? No, 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 Naval Air St Naval Hospital, that's what it was. Oh, yeah. Now what do I do? Yeah. You know, he took off and, well, I better find the company area. Uh -huh. So I found the company area, <clears throat> went to supply, you know, turned in all my uh -huh. gear, and now I'm weaponless, you know. Yeah. Mm. So 
Um, we, we went to the EM club and there's this mm. Korean selling large family Bibles to the guys if they all, you know. You could have used a year <laughs> earlier, couldn't you? Holy yeah. macro! It was yeah. just weird yeah. to to come out of the bush like that, and you're. Is it over? It's it's surreal. Yeah, it was. It, literally it was. The definition of surreal, I think. It was, and then it was, you know. Um, so how did you get home? You went home on a commercial airliner. Yeah, I'm I'm sure I did. Uh, Continental or something. Or... Yeah, it was out of Da Nang, yeah. and then all of a sudden, I'm never coming back to this hole in the wall again and <clears throat> uh, we landed at uh, uh, Camp Hansen again on Okinawa uh -huh. and uh, our old company Gunny was the guy who puts people on yeah. on uh, on airplanes and so a buddy of mine and I uh, asked if we could stay there another week so we could get home at Christmas and uh -huh. have a little more time and uh, uh, the day I left, uh, it was snowing, you know. Yeah. So um, I got home and I, I just, I didn't know what, it was like you I was. You landed at McGuire Air Force Base? No, we landed at El Toro. It's not El there Toro, anymore, yeah. but, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have any protesters throwing stuff at me. Yeah. And, um, you know, we got on the bus to go to LAX and, you know, on to home, and nobody were in, bothered were me. Were you in your uh, green <clears throat> uniform, or were you mm -hmm. in civvies? No, I, I didn't have any civvies. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So uh, he, he was a Marine. He wasn't Army. Yeah, we didn't have civvies. We weren't allowed. <laughs> Later, the <laughs> Army made people take civvies, so they didn't want them flying when they started all the protesting stuff in '69 ah. and '70. No, that would have that well, would have required home, we were, preparation. Yeah. So we didn't do that. We yeah. are not into preparation. Well, we're we into came home. We were required. <clears throat> when I came home in '68, you didn't have a choice. You were supposed to ch change uh, from fatigue or what you would call utilities out of the utilities into a green uniform or a khaki uniform, depending on what time of year it was. Yeah. So, uh, but you guys, you you were just flying what your marine greens. That's that, all. I, that's yeah. all anybody I knew yeah. had. Uh -huh. You know, you could. I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I guess we could have gone into a city or something and gotten, yeah. but that didn't, they weren't really letting us off the well, base. Later on, they got real touchy about it because of the protests. Right, yeah. right. I know the guys that came, or I'd heard the guys that came in from San Francisco really got it bad. Yeah, that's where I came in. Is that right? Did you get stuff thrown on you? And yeah, some guy tried to throw paint. And I, he, he was throwing it, there was seven of us coming down the ramp. They brought us over in buses from McGuire. And a guy threw paint, but it I don't know, he was throwing it at me, he was throwing it at any one of us. Right. And the guy behind me damn near killed the guy that was throwing the paint. It took mm. three of us to pull him off of it. But you know. Whew. Well, you know, I uh landed at Eamon Carter Field, which is no longer yeah. there anymore and in, in uh Dallas Fort Worth area and I was So home. you went home to Texas mm -hmm. and <clears throat> what did you stay in the Marine Corps after that or Yes, I had another two years to do. Yeah, you know, but by that time they weren't sending. You know, I was I got signed to Alpha First uh, Battalion, Twenty Eighth Marines, and then to H and S three uh, three three. Where was uh, that? Which, which <clears throat> there at Camp Pendleton. At Camp Pendleton. At Camp Pendleton, and I I remember one machine gunner getting a ticket back. Or getting a ticket for his first time, yeah. but nobody was, they just weren't letting us go back. Uh -huh. So, uh, not that I really wanted to go back, but. Yeah. Um, well, they abandoned k -Sun, Oh, yeah. Which, they abandoned everything. They did, yeah. Yeah. k -Sun was the, Westmoreland's theory, according to what I've read, was that the Tet Offensive was just a diversion so that they could invade Quezon. Which was I don't completely, know. Which had nothing <clears throat> to do with what they were doing. So he completely misread the intel. So uh, what what was your job? Do you continue to be a mortar guy uh, with the 1st Battalion 28? Well, I was, I was an 0311, yeah. uh, 0341 yeah. mortars, but 0311. Right. And so I, I got put in Alpha 128. 
Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're just doing marching, you know, close order drill and going to the NCO school and and all that. And, you know, we, we did a, a, a week out on the Iwo Jima, one, another one of those Jeep carrier things. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in and, you know, hella left in. We're going to play Marines and all that stuff. And, yeah. and uh, you know, just then we did... Um, Cold weather training up at Fallon, Nevada. Uh -huh. um, that was, I don't know who thought that up, but you know, we had we had the boots that, you know, the protect your feet. Of course, we had to carry them. We weren't allowed to use them. So um, we just got those regular old leather boots yeah. and not enough socks and um, so, <laughs> Most of the guys that were with you, were they Vietnam vets at that point? Yeah, everybody was the I don't care anymore, typical, you know, I've been over there, I've yeah. seen the elephant, and, you know, yeah. and I just really don't care. Um, you know, I'm not going to do something stupid to get court-martialed, but um, I'm just going to do the bare minimums because all I want to do is get out of this thing and... and um, it and just, so that's what you did? You did your four years and then got out? Well, actually, um, I got out, I didn't qu quite do three years because they were, if you had a radio MOS, you were getting 18 month out. Mm -hmm. um, 03s were getting just about the same. Mm -hmm. So naturally, the week before I got out, we had an IG, you know, junk on the bunk, all your yeah. gear on the bunk. and. Guys, <laughs> yeah. I'm not into this anymore, right. and uh, yeah. uh, it was just I I I don't want to do stateside Marine Corps anymore. It's just that's not me. So, so yeah. What did you do when you got out of the Marine Corps? What did I do? Well, I got a job at Safeway. You know, yeah. I was thoroughly trained to kill people and break things, <laughs> but I wasn't trained for anything else. You know, I'm right out of high school. I'm not, you know, so, you not know. a lot of big demand for killing right. people out of the civilian life. <laughs> I can shoot you at 400 <laughs> meters. How's that, you know? But, uh, uh, you know, and then I got uh, after, I was making 265 an hour. <laughs> Holy mackerel. So. I got a job over at General Dynamics in their non-destructive testing yeah. uh, field, and I got one of the highest scores in the class. I'm thinking, wait a minute, you you got somebody else mixed up with me? This is not me. I'm just a dumb grunt. And I, I began to realize I had that capacity uh -huh. to to study, and because I was motivated now. And uh, I got a family and all that. And so you were uh, married at this point. I was married. Actually, I forgot to tell you, I got married on R and R. Yeah. And I'm still married to the same lady, uh, which is, you know, she's she's being put up for sainthood here very <laughs> shortly. So, um, you know, and I started having problems. I don't know what you had, but uh, you know. But they didn't have a title for it, and you know I wasn't hanging around other combat veterans or anything, and so uh, uh, you know come home and stare at the ceiling, you know. Well, I want to talk to you. No, I don't. I don't do that right now, you know. So we were we were having issues, and then I I uh, decided I wanted to go to school up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, for air pa air frame and power plant <coughs> mm -hmm. Spartans. Well, the worst thing in the world would be to fly on an airplane I worked on. You know, that would be really stupid, even after I went. That's just not my thing. And uh, my wife and I were having some some real issues. That was the problem. It wasn't her. And uh, I know the feeling. Yeah. So we, I'd gotten into martial arts, you know, mm -hmm. that control issue. And... Um, uh, we were we were really having a lot of issues, and one of the guys that worked where my wife worked um, uh, said, 
you need to come to church with me, you know. And so uh, she said, uh, let me call this pastor over here. And so he came and, and we both became Christians about that time. Um, I, I needed something. I was, I was pretty much under the hole, you know. And um, it, I didn't what, know what to expect. What year was this, this was 1972 in the summer. Uh, things were just, we had separated. So you been and home about four years at that point? About four years, and that took me, it took me four years to completely destroy things, you know, and uh, figure it out. I, I, I'm over my head here. And um, so doing that and, uh, um, okay, what do I do? I'm, I'm trained as a killer, you know. Um, I can kill you with a mortar tube or, you know, you know a, a K-bar in between yeah. my teeth. And, yeah. But um, that doesn't really get you anywhere. So um, uh, at that point, we decided, we, we met some folks that were on staff with Campus Crusade, okay? And uh, Dave Hanna was the Athletes in Action part of that. He was over that, and they were looking for anything. If you were a champion tiddlywinks player, they'd get you on there, you know, and you'd go around and do your thing. And so I started this karate demonstration team, and, and um, uh, we were also working with high school and college coaches, you know. Um, and uh, that just, the, the karate thing just kind of went away, you know, which is fine with me. Um, uh, and then I got assigned to Cincinnati, um, and we had a, we had a edict from on high, just under Bill Bright, who was running the thing, and um, uh, you got to raise all your support. Well, that didn't work out, so. I ended up in college, you know, a little Bible college in Southern California. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized I graduated very high in my class. And it was like 130, 100. It wasn't a big school. Yeah. But I just did well under that kind of pressure. And um, so we got out, uh, graduated, uh, went back to Texas, started a little church. Uh, and then Vietnam started rearing its ugly head, and uh, um, I resigned. You know, I was just I was just really struggling, and so I got a job as a janitor. Okay, uh, at a Christian school church, and that's where my kids went. And so my wife was secretary, so I'm around my kids, and it didn't matter to me. Well, it so happened the guy I was working with was also a case on veteran, yeah. you know? And so uh, we just hit it off great. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out, okay, what I do next, coach, you know? Mm -hmm. So my immediate boss and her immediate boss directed me to Covenant Seminary in St. Louis, okay? So we took off for St. Louis. I did the graduate thing and uh, went to, uh, um, went up to South Dakota. They, they gave me a call to that church. Um, it was just ornery enough that uh, after about three years, I was ready to kill everybody in there, you know, and this isn't, what's wrong with this picture, you know? So I was, I ended up at uh, the VA, you know, who are you? I, I don't know, let me check my wallet here. I didn't know who I was, and um, through that process, uh, they said, you've got PTSD. I do. And you said, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. All I know I was going through that stuff, it's right. like they're trying to make sure you don't get uh, compensation, and you're trying to go, I'm just trying to hold my head on here, you know? Right. 
Okay. And um, so I resigned the church and went back to St. Louis. I like St. Louis. And, um, you know, they're trying to still get the medication just right. Um, and that was about... That was about a 10-year project because not all the doctors are on the same page with everybody else. And so through that process, um, you know, I told the Lord, okay, don't call me. I'll call you, okay? Um, this, so far, it hasn't really worked out real well, and, and you know, but now I'm medicated, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so. I ended up meeting a guy named Van Lees, and he was a Covenant Seminary graduate, and uh, Van is kind of just shy of brilliant, you know, yeah. then there's me. You know, he was a band nerd, I was the jock in high school, and we just hit it off, yeah. you know. And so he was teaching over in Ukraine, and so after about a year in his church, um, I said, could I go over and teach a class, you know? He said, let me talk to the elders. So next thing I know, I'm in Donetsk, Ukraine, uh, about 2003. Yeah. Um, I'm teaching, and I'm really having a great time, and I'm enjoying the students. Uh, man, I like this. Right. So I've been going to Ukraine for since 2003, and uh, now I'm teaching in Haiti. And in India, um, Bible studies. Yeah, I got my PhD in 2000, 2016. Okay. I wrote I wrote my yeah. thesis on PTSD. Yeah. So and and a reform position on that, and so um, um, just now I got to have a novel and. Um, uh, I'm working on shortening my thesis so that I can take that material and put it in a book as well. I'd love to read it. So, um, at any rate, I've, I've learned an awful lot about PTSD, and but the way I do things is completely different than what the, the VA does. So, because I didn't go through the let's take counseling degree and that kind of thing. I was just doing a theology thing and... Uh, so, um, I have different perspective of all that. Well, whatever works. Yep. Um, so, you are still doing that? You're still going um, to, you're now in Haiti. Doing well, Haiti. right. Uh, May the 5th through the 12th, I've got to go ordain one of our students and baptize some folks and uh, do that and teach for about a week. And then I'm going to either Haiti or Grenada the next month, and then in tail end of August, I'll be in India again. So I don't know after that. The kids uh, are all grown now. Yeah, they're they're grown. And you mm -hmm. and the wife survived. The, we did. The PTSD we did. Era. As a matter of fact, we are probably doing better than we've ever done. Uh huh. You know, once when I got my degree, Vietnam stopped hurting. It just, it was, because you'd ask me how I was doing, and I'm kind of going, well, I'm here, you know, I'm uh, maybe 15 minutes from now, I, you know, but when people uh, in 2016, when they'd ask me, I'd say, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good, yeah. you know, and I realized I've, I've moved on from that. It doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, you know, I can talk about it now, you make fun of it and, yeah. and that kind of thing, but uh it's what's what's manifesting itself is between my wife and me. Um, we are working together better. Uh, you know the word love. What the heck does that mean? I know what it means to love a fellow soldier, mm -hmm. but you know I love you, dear. What the heck does that mean? You know, and all of a sudden I'm I'm really beginning to experience that. Um, and the emotions are kind of being released, you know, to where you, I mean what I say. Before it was just, I'm supposed to say it here in the script, and then I say it over here, you know, but it's, it's well, just been. when you start been, blocking out the bad stuff, you block out the good stuff. Oh, yeah. 
That's what yeah. I had to learn to let it let it out, let it go. Because if I didn't let it go, I'm le I'm not the good stuff's not getting in either. Um, so well, that that's good news. It sounds like you've come to a good place. Looking back on Vietnam um, now that you've got this. 50-year perspective right. to look yeah. back on it. What what are your feelings today about the war and about Vietnam in general, just, just about the whole Vietnam War? Well, I, it, for me, it's hard to look at it apart from a theological perspective. Uh -huh. um, uh, Vietnam was going to be fought, okay? Um, it was fought. It's, it's hard to when LBJ says, I'm not running again, you know, like I'm out of here, boys. Um, well, if he's not gonna hang around, you know, what's, yeah. um, I think, I think the Korean War veterans get short shrift because nobody even knows we were in war there, yeah. you know, um, and, to know how how hard those guys fought in those brutally cold conditions, yeah. you know, you've got the World War II veteran uh, generation. I'm getting to your answer, but they had to win. They just had to win. But when you have these proxy war kind of things, regional, and it's not you're not going to let it. You know, uh -huh. We're not here to win anything. Um, the guys that stay there and hang in there, you know. Uh, you're in charge of guys, and when they when they get killed, it's it just take a part of me too. Um, exactly. But you still keep doing it. I I don't know why we aren't the greatest generation as well. We did the best we could with what we were given. The Congress was not going to let us win because that wasn't the goal, you know. So, um, you know, my hats off to anybody that that stuck that out, and I understand why. When you're getting toward 1970, the guys are going. I'm not going out on patrol anymore. At least I heard that's what they were what they were doing. Um, it. Funny, I heard that, but I've yet to ever meet anybody. Who well, did, maybe that's personally experienced. Yeah. It. So I wonder sometimes if there might not have been some isolated unit somewhere that the I media don't know. jumped on. Um, I don't it know never when happened the, to me ever. Yeah. Not one time did my troops ever right. refuse to do their job honorably, ever. Yeah. Um, well, I want to I want to thank you very much for uh, being here today and for allowing us to share your Vietnam experience. Um, you've been very candid and very direct. I, I always <laughs> think that there's both. The bad news, and the, there's also some humor. It's hard yeah. to explain that to people, but I think you did it better than I've ever seen anybody <laughs> do it. So, so I want to thank you. If there's anything else you'd like to tell us before we shut down today, um, I, I have to be honest and tell you just from a personal standpoint, I've thoroughly enjoyed your interview today. Well, you know, um, going through all that stuff, you know, and you come home and I can honestly say now, I thank the Lord for ta for putting me in Vietnam, uh -huh. uh, not just because you have to grow up, but because it it put me in a place to where I had to look up, you know. Um, y you can get very self-sufficient, I'm you know, if I have some chow and some ammo and my weapons clean, I'm good, you know. But this was so far over my head that when Christ found me underneath the hole, um, life has just gotten better and better. It didn't mean that the Vietnam went away because I became a Christian, but it did mean that I've got, I have hope, you know, uh, not just for this life, but the, but the next one. My marriage is better than it's ever been. Um, I mean, it's like we're, we're really starting to get to know each other because all the, the masks are off, you know. She knows what I'm like when I'm, you know, and um, we've worked it out and she prays for me when I'm, but I don't have that stuff much anymore. So um, I wouldn't trade a second of the, the year I was there or 
the 50 years afterwards. It was all part of making me who I am. So that's, um, you know, I thank you for doing what you did, you know, taking idiots like me and turning them into something. Um, you know, we're just all trying to. I, wasn't, I, I was a bit of an idiot myself back in those days. So well, I, I want to thank you again. Um, and um, it is now 1237. <laughs> Good grief. So I kept are, waiting. You're going to you're going to turn this off any minute now. We're going <clears> to <throat> we're going to. Uh, well, I'm afraid we're going to run out of tape. I think that's another issue. But no. I want to thank you again in behalf of the Atlanta History Center and the Library of Congress. I want to let you know that this will be transcribed. Uh, I, the the tape itself is going to go to the Library of Congress. Wow! Um, so and it will also be on file here at the History Center, so that your children, grandchildren, your wife, your great grandchildren are going to be able to access this. So thank wow. you very much. And at this point, um, April thirteenth, two thousand eighteen, at twelve thirty-seven, the interview is concluded. And thank you. Wow. Thank you, thank you. for no. your service well, and welcome home. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.